Number 39, write Lewis structures for the following. And then we have A through K. <laughs> okay. All right, so we got this. So first things first, Lewis structures are always going to be written for covalent compounds. Covalent compounds. And these are the compounds that are uh, when all nonmetals or two or more nonmetals are coming together and interacting and sharing electrons. So if we've noticed that all of these, A through K, they're all nonmetals. So that's why on the right-hand side, I only added a little bit of the periodic table because Lewis structures will always be focusing in the upper right-hand corner of the periodic table. So the, the thing that you really have to know as far as writing Lewis structures is how many valence electrons do these nonmetals have? So just know that hydrogen right, which is all the way on the left on, on a regular periodic table, has one valence electron. And then group 13 through 18, which is what I have here, has three, four, five, six, seven, and then eight uh, valence electrons. Remember, valence electrons are the electrons that are in the outermost shell of a certain atom. Okay, second thing is I want to say that Lewis structures are taught differently and, you know, every teacher and professor has their own specific way of writing Lewis structures. Some professors and teachers like to write dots as electrons, but sometimes I see that they just draw a line to represent two electrons. Um, so every teacher and professor has their own method or way. I have my own method or way, and I found that this way is the easiest that students can understand and learn, and it's my foolproof Lewis structures method. So if you do this on your test or quiz, um, objectively, it would not be wrong. Would it be the right way that they would want to see? I don't know. You would have to ask your teacher or professor about that. So just be aware. But the process of doing it is perfect. All right. So let's get into it. So A, they want us to write the Lewis structure for H2. So the first thing that you're always going to do is write a blueprint for your atoms. Figure out how it's drawn. Well, in this case, there's only two hydrogens, and I know that they have to link up covalently. They have to share electrons. So my blueprint would just be an H right next to another H, a hydrogen next to a hydrogen. It's not going to be hard, but as we go, you know, more in depth into the questions, they're going to get a little bit more challenging. So that would be your blueprint. The second thing is you want to just draw your valence electrons around each atom, and it's the valence electrons that they're given. So for hydrogen... Each hydrogen has one valence electron, which means that I would only write one dot per each hydrogen. And now I know that probably the space that is going to bind is going to be this space between the hydrogens. So I will just put my one electron here and the other electron here, right? It wouldn't make sense to put the electron over here because what is this going to try to bind with? Nothing. So you try to make it as easy on yourself as possible. Try to link them up by putting the electrons close to where the bonding site is. That's the end for the second part. The third part is now you're going to actually start binding. So my suggestion is only try to link up for single bonds and then just do a check. So remember, two electrons, I'll put that over here. Two electrons will always come together to form a single bond, all right? And then if we need a double pair, that's a total of four electrons. Four electrons make a double bond. And then last but not least, if you have three from each, so three from each atom, you will form a triple bond and that's six electrons. So there's two, four, six, and that's what a triple bond is all about. So just kind of get that down pat. So in this case, we're just going to do the single bond. So one electron will bind with the other electron and that's it. I mean, there's only two atoms here, so you can only bind them together. And now you're just going to check your outer atoms for the octet. Octet usually means that they should have eight electrons, but there are some exceptions. The exceptions are, and I'll just put them over here at the bottom. The exception is hydrogen would want to have two electrons and boron would want to have six electrons. But all the other ones, if they're the outer atoms, 
they want to have the octet. So in this case, if I look at this hydrogen, this has two electrons because now this is telling me that it's being shared. So this hydrogen really has one, two. It has that single bond, so that's two electrons. And this hydrogen can share those electrons, so that's also two. So they're good, they check out. So what I usually do is I just make like a check and we're good. We don't have to add any more multiple bonds because each hydrogen has two electrons. That's hydrogen's octet. So that would be the answer for A. That one was easy. B, HBr. So we're gonna start from the top again. We gotta write the blueprint. So in this case, it's just a hydrogen that's right next to a bromine. That's it. The second part is put the dots, right? The valence electrons. Hydrogen, we know is over here, it has one valence electron, and bromine has seven. So I'm going to have one valence electron for hydrogen and seven for bromine. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And now I'm going to just make that single bond and check for the octet. So one electron here with one electron here, that's a single bond. And when we do that, hydrogen has now two electrons because it now has a single bond. So this has two, so that's good. And now bromine has two, four, six, eight, because a single bond counts as two electrons. So this now has the octet two electrons, and that's that. Bromine has the octet, hydrogen has two, it's octet, so we are good. Box that answer off, that's B. So I just wanna put over here, single bond is two electrons total, shared, double bond is four electrons, and then triple bond is six. Okay, next, PCL3, hmm. Now this one, this one's tricky because who is going to be in the middle? Now it looks like we have central atoms. In these two examples, we didn't have central atoms, right? It was just one hydrogen on one side and then a hydrogen and a bromine on the other side. But this one, we clearly have a central atom. Who is the central atom? There's a rule, and I'm gonna put that over here. Central atom, so I'll put CE, oh actually, atom is A. <laughs> so the central atom, CA, is always the least electronegative, all right? Now, there's an exception, it's never hydrogen. Hydrogen will never be in the middle. So if you have two elements, one is hydrogen and one is something else, that other atom is going to be in the middle. Hydrogen is never going to be in the middle, but we need to know our electronegativity trend. What is the electronegativity trend? We should know that, right? As we go from left to right, Across a period, electronegativity, so electro neg, will always increase. And then as you go from top to bottom, electronegativity, so I'll just put EN, electronegativity decreases. So just know that. So between phosphorus and chlorine, who is the central atom? Well, here's phosphorus, here's chlorine. Electronegativity increases from left to right, so chlorine would be more, so that means that phosphorus would be in the middle. So now in this case, my blueprint would be one phosphorus in the middle surrounded by three chlorines. Now we draw the valence electrons around each atom. So for phosphorus, I would draw five electrons. Chlorine, I would draw seven each. So here we go. I'm gonna draw five for phosphorus. One, two, three, four, five. And then seven for each chlorine. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And now we are ready to bond with only single bonds. So remember, a single bond is one electron from each side. So this phosphorus would make a single bond with that chlorine, that electron from chlorine, so that's one. This electron would make a single bond with this electron from chlorine, and this electron will make a single bond with this one. Do you see how I made one single bond per each connection? 
Now we check the outer elements. If the outer elements has its octet, we should be fine. So let's check the outer ones. In this case, it's chlorine. So for this chlorine, it has two, four, six, eight electrons. So that's good. So that's a check. Let's check the chlorine on the bottom. Two, four, six, eight. So that's also the octet. So this guy is good. And then let's check this chlorine on the side. Oops. Let's check this chlorine on the side right here, right? So it has two, four, six, eight electrons. So all the three chlorines have the octet. So now that probably means that the middle element should have its octet as well. So let's see for phosphorus. It has two, four, six, eight electrons, and they are all good. So that is the end for this Lewis structure. So box that answer off. That's the answer for this one. So this one was a little bit more challenging, but if you guys just check your outer elements, everything should be good. D, I'll put D over here. We have SF2. So first we have to figure out who's the central. Is it sulfur or is it going to be fluorine? Sulfur's over here, fluorine's over here. As you go over, you increase, right? And as you go down, you decrease. So which one would be the least electronegative? It would be sulfur. So that means sulfur is in the middle and fluorine is on the outer sides. Sometimes you can guess by just how it looks, but always just be positive. Sometimes they do try to trick you. So sulfur in the middle with two fluorines on both sides. And now we're ready to draw the valence electrons around each atom. Sulfur has six valence electrons. Fluorine has seven. So I'll draw six dots around sulfur, seven around each fluorine. So for sulfur, I will have one, two, three, four, five, six. This fluorine, I'll put seven. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And then for this fluorine, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Bond only single bonds, and then check for the outer elements to have that octet. So this electron from sulfur will bind to form that single bond with fluorine. This electron from fluorine will bind to make that single bond with sulfur. All single bonds, and now we just check the outer elements. This fluorine right here has two, four, six, eight electrons. So that's a check. This fluorine on the, right, on the left hand side has two, four, six, eight electrons. So that's also a check. So if the two outers are good, that probably means that the inner one is good as well, but we should always just double check. Two, four, six, eight. They all have the octet rule and they are all good. So we can box that answer off. These are kind of fun, right? What do you guys think? It's cool to draw for a little bit and not do as much math, but more math probably coming in the upcoming chapters. All right, so E is h 2 c CH2. Ooh. All right. So they're getting a little bit more complex, but we got this. Now, remember the central atom can never be hydrogen. So if I look at this compound right here, I know that this hydrogen isn't going to be in the middle. And I know that this hydrogen is not going to be in the middle. These are the two elements that are going to be in the middle. And in this case, they kind of wrote it out for you, right? It looks like these two hydrogens are bound to this carbon, which is bound to that carbon, which then has the two hydrogens. So I will just write it like that from left to right. So it looks like these two hydrogens are bound to a carbon, which is bound to a carbon, and then two hydrogens. With these Lewis structures, you try to make it as symmetrical as possible. And that would be your blueprint, right? When we say write the blueprint. So now, Let's draw the valence electrons around each atom. So we have hydrogen have one valence electron, carbon has four. So I'm gonna draw one dot around each hydrogen and four dots around each carbon. So I'm gonna say one, two, three, four for the hydrogens, and then each carbon should have four. So one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. 
Now let's single bond it up, right? So one electron from here, bonding with that one electron from carbon, that's a single bond. This is a single bond. These are single bonds, single bond over here. And then I'm gonna do one single bond over here. Now, let's just check the outers. So for each hydrogen, so for this hydrogen, this one has two electrons, and remember, hydrogen only wants to have two electrons when bound. So this hydrogen's good. This hydrogen has two, so that's good. This hydrogen has two, and this hydrogen has two. So the hydrogens are all good. And technically, if we have our outer elements good, that probably means that the inner ones are good, but sometimes that's not the case, like this one. Look at this carbon, for example, right? How many electrons does this carbon have? Two, four, six, seven. It needs eight. But look at the other carbon. Two, four, six, seven. So what do you think? These two electrons are going to bind. And that's what I mean by add multiple bonds if needed. In this case, we will need to have a double bond and that's gonna happen because this one electron will form that bond with this electron. And there you go. Now this carbon has two, four, six, eight electrons, and the other carbon does as well. Two, four, six, eight. So it's all good. So that's the answer for that one. Box that off. Now let's do F. H, N, N, H. Okay, this kind of looks the same, right? Hydrogen can never be in the middle, and it looks like these two elements are bound together. And if I write it from left to right, it looks like hydrogen will be bound with nitrogen, which will be bound to another nitrogen, which will be bound to a hydrogen. So that's the blueprint. Now let's draw those valence electrons. So each hydrogen has one valence, each nitrogen has five. So one dot for hydrogen, one dot for hydrogen over here. And now I'm going to say one, um, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five. Okay. Now we make only a single bond between the atoms. So I have one electron for the hydrogen, one electron here, so single bond. One electron, one electron, so that makes a single bond one electron, one electron. Now let's check the outer elements. This hydrogen has two, right? This hydrogen has two electrons, so that guy's good. And the other hydrogen also has two electrons and hydrogen only wants to have two, so this guy's good. So now let's see if these are good. So this nitrogen has two, four, six, seven electrons, so that's not good. And this nitrogen has two, four, six, seven electrons. So I need to get eight. So we add multiple bonds if necessary. It looks like this electron from this nitrogen and this electron from this nitrogen are going to bind. And with Lewis structures, if you haven't noticed, all the lone electrons, which means the ones that aren't bound, are always in pairs. This fluorine is in a pair, these electrons on fluorine are in a pair. So if you ever see one lone electron, chances are that it's going to want to bind with another element. But now we have the octet for both of them, and that's the end for this one. Now we're 50% done. So if you need to write these down, just pause the video for now, because I'm just going to erase them so that we could do G through K. Okay, so let me just get rid of all of this. And then, let me just, okay. I guess I'll leave this one up there. This one was F. All right, now we're going to G. So G is H2CNH. Well, if we go by the central atom, hydrogen can never be in the central, so that automatically kicks out these two. And it looks like the two middle elements are carbon and nitrogen. And it looks like it's being written just like this, from left to right. So it looks like two hydrogens 
are bound to carbon, which are bound to nitrogen, which is then bound to a hydrogen. So sometimes you want to try to make it as symmetrical as possible, but when you're given stuff that aren't symmetrical, you try to make it, you know, as nice as possible. Now let's draw the valence electrons. Each hydrogen has one valence, carbon has four, and nitrogen has five. So I'll put one, four, and five dots around hydrogen, carbon, and nitrogen. So each hydrogen should have one dot. Carbon should have four. So I'll put one, two, three, four. And each nitrogen should have five. So one, two, uh, three, and then we'll put four or five. Now, bond only single bonds. So it looks like this electron will bond with this electron from carbon. This will bond with this. This will bond with this. This will bond with this. So everybody has a single bond. Now check the outer elements. This hydrogen has two electrons, so that's good. This hydrogen has two electrons, so that's good. And once you say that it's good, you will never ever change the structure of that bonding for that element. So you can't change this single bond. And then this hydrogen has two electrons, a single bond, so that's good. And now let's go for the inner ones. So this carbon has two, four, six, seven electrons. It wants to have eight. And this nitrogen has two, four, six, seven electrons. It wants to have eight. So what do you think? This is where we have to make a multiple bond. So one electron from carbon binding with the one electron from nitrogen. And now if you just check, this carbon will have two, four, six, eight electrons. So that's good. And this nitrogen will have two, four, six, eight. So that's good as well. So that's the answer for this Lewis structure. Box that answer off. And now we are moving on to H. Okay. N-O, negative. Now this is our first one that has a negative sign. And remember what negative means in chemistry world, right? Negative means that there's a gain in electron. In this case, it's a negative one. So we gained one electron. That's going to be added right after your second step. So after you add your valence electrons around each atom, then you will either, um, you know, add or subtract valence electrons given the charge. So it looks like here we have two atoms, right? We just have nitrogen and oxygen. So our blueprint would be nitrogen next to oxygen. Okay. Next, we're going to draw the valence electrons. So each nitrogen has five valence. Each oxygen has six. So I'll put five around nitrogen and six around oxygen. So I'll say one, two, three, four, five. And then for oxygen, I'll say one, two... I don't know, three, four, five, six. Okay. Now, for adding or subtracting valence electrons. In this case, we have to gain one electron, which means that we will add one dot. Now, does it really matter which element you add the electron? No, I generally like to add my uh, electrons to the more electronegative element, but it doesn't matter. You can always throw electrons from one atom to the other atom if necessary. So in this case, I will just add my one electron to oxygen, but if I need to bring it over to nitrogen, you can do that. So I'm just going to add it over here. Now we're going to add our single bonds and then check and then add multibonds if we need to. So here's a single bond, one and two. And now let's check. So for this nitrogen, I have two, four, five, six electrons. So that's not good. Remember, nitrogen wants to have an octet. And for this oxygen, I have two, 
four, six, seven, eight. So I have um, six electrons for nitrogen and I have eight electrons for oxygen. Something's not right, right? So this is where we're going to start throwing electrons and making multiple bonds. So what I'm going to do right now is I'm first just going to make this nice and neat by putting this with this, because remember, electrons want to be paired. Okay. Now, if we try to make a bond with one electron from nitrogen and one electron from oxygen, you will see that we will not have a pair, right? If I did that, that means that I have to erase one electron from here and one electron from oxygen. And nitrogen would have two, four, six, seven electrons. So we're actually getting close, right? So we can do that. But now what do you think? We have two, four, six, eight, nine electrons for oxygen. That's no good. Once you go over eight, something went wrong. So that means that our thinking of adding the double bond from the two electrons was not correct. But that's okay. There are other ways to make eight and eight. Instead of having one from nitrogen and one from oxygen, like we just did, what you could also do is take one whole pair and put it into the bond. So for example, if I take these two electrons from oxygen and put them in, this is going to say, okay, well, they're not just oxygen anymore. They're going to be a bond because those two electrons came from oxygen. Now look to see what's going to happen. This nitrogen will have two, four, six, eight electrons, so that's good. And this oxygen will have two, four, six, eight. So if the one electron from one atom and one electron from the other atom doesn't work, you could always take two from the same atom and throw them into a bond, and that should work as well. Now, you have to add the charge with this Lewis structure. So whenever we add charges, we always put brackets and the charge in the upper right-hand corner. And now that's the end for H. Next, I, N2. Okay, so we just have two nitrogens. So the blueprint would be one nitrogen next to each other. And now each nitrogen has five valence electrons. So I'll just draw five electrons around nitrogen for each one. So I'll say one, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five. And now single bond and then check. So I'm going to put one bond here, right? And now let's see, this nitrogen has two, four, five, six electrons, no good. This nitrogen has, whoop, I accidentally got rid of the single bond. This nitrogen has two, four, five, six. So that means that we need another bond. So let's add this with this. This nitrogen would then have two, four, six, seven. We're, so we're getting there. And this nitrogen would have two, four, six, seven. So we're getting there. So what does that mean? Oh, okay, well this one of these will go in here and one of these will go to form the triple bond. So now we have a triple bond and let me just Make this a little bit nice, nice and neat. I can, look at that, perfect. So now if I look at nitrogen, this has two, four, six, eight electrons. And then this nitrogen has two, four, six, eight electrons. And that's good, they both have the octet. We are done with that one. J, C, O. So it's just carbon and oxygen, so carbon, and oxygen. Each carbon has four valence, each oxygen has six, so I will draw four and six. So we'll say one, two, three, four for carbon, and one, two, three, four, five, six for oxygen. Make that single bond, so I'll say one and one, and then we'll just check. So for carbon, it's two, three, four, five, so that's not good. And then for this oxygen, we have two, four, five, six, seven. 
So we can make another bond. So we'll say this electron and this electron are making a bond. And now this carbon has two, four, five, six electrons. So we're getting there. And this oxygen has two, four, six, eight. Okay, so oxygen already has eight. So I'm going to just make it nice. I'm going to pair this electron up here. If it will let me grab it. There it goes. And now what can happen? If the oxygen already has eight, it won't want to have any more, which means that these two electrons will bind and form the next bond to help carbon out. So basically, these two electrons will come in here and say, okay, we can make a bond. So if I just erase these two, and now I will form a triple bond, and I'll just bring this down, and now look at carbon. Carbon has two, four, six, seven, eight electrons, and oxygen has two, four, six, eight electrons. So they both have the octet, they are both happy, and that's how the Lewis structure looks. The only thing I would suggest is just cleaning this up. The electrons always want to exist as a pair, so they would go like that. And that's the answer. And now, last but not least, let's do CN. I'm just going to erase F over here. Okay. And now let's write K, CN. So again, this is a minus one. So we got to add one electron to our compound after we draw the valences. So this one, it looks like there's just carbon next to nitrogen. Each carbon has four valence. Each nitrogen has five valence electrons. So I will say one, two, three, four. One, two, three, four, five. And now I have to add one. It doesn't really matter where. Usually I like to add it to the more electronegative element, so I'm just going to add it here. And now we make that single bond. So one electron will form one bond here, and then we just check. So two, three, four, five for carbon, still wants more. For nitrogen, it would be two, four, six, seven. It still wants more. So we need a double bond between these. Carbon now has two, four, five, six electrons, so it's getting there. Nitrogen has two, four, six, eight. So if we make another bond, nitrogen's gonna have too many. So this is the case where instead of making one for one for the bond, nitrogen will take its two electrons and throw them in. So if nitrogen takes its two, and throws them in, these are now going to act as a bond. And now let's see. Carbon now has two, four, six, seven, eight. So that's the octet. Nitrogen has two, four, six, eight. That's the octet and we are good. All you gotta do is just clean it up. So I just like to make my electrons a pair. So they would go like this, you know, clean this up. Everything looks nice and neat. Box it off, that's the answer. Oh, and you got to put brackets because there's a charge here. So just got to put brackets, say that it was a minus one, and that gets boxed off. All right. And that's the end for this one. Whew, so much examples, but we did them. Hopefully this makes sense. Hopefully this foolproof method helps you guys out. Let me know in the comments what you think. I'm sure if you show this on your exam or quizzes or tests or whatever, your teacher or professor won't mark you wrong, but I would just double check with them just to make sure that they want dots instead of lines. So ask your professor about that. Thank you so much for tuning in. Thanks so much for staying to the end. It means a lot to me. Thank you for the support. If you want to support the channel, click subscribe. Um, I'll see you guys all in the next question. Have an awesome day.